everybody. Thank you for joining us today. I am Heidi Brennan. I'm the K-8 specialist here at Pasco Scientific. So what we're hoping is that we have folks joining us today that are looking for new and exciting things to bring into classrooms to build up their STEM offerings for students and build capacity with teachers. So we're going to walk you through some of our STEM Sense line today and talk to you about how you can use it in the classroom. Maybe you're a teacher out there that's looking for something to advocate for a program that you hold dear and you'd like to implement. And we're hoping to give you all that information today. So again, Heidi Brennan, K-8 specialist here. In my previous life, I served as a STEM lab teacher and I had several preps every student in the school that cycled through my classroom to get enrichment in the area of STEM. And I was really charged with ensuring that I was touching base and building more capacity with the students and understanding of their grade level science skills, as well as mathematical practices, and of course, having engineering design in the mix. Fast forward to 2016, I was a STEM specialist at the State Department and we had just adopted our new and fresh computer science standards. And I had to go stand in front of our science uh, supervisors for the state and then talk to them about, oh, now we need to implement computational thinking and programming and computing skills into our classrooms. We'd like to see an integration of science and mathematics. And it was a bit of a daunting task at first because it seems like a lot. And then fast forward again to 2019 and I arrived here at PASCO, transplanted across the country and really got excited because we were starting a brand new line uh, using our, our code node, which I'll share with you shortly. And we were charged with building packages that out of the box teachers and students could use so they could be collecting real time data and um, using tools to analyze it and then use that real time data in programs to make something happen or to tackle a challenge. And I want to share with you what we came up with. So we're going to be talking about the STEM Sense line today, uh, particularly three kits that we call our coding with sensor technologies that utilize this great device here, the code node. So let me introduce to you what this device does. So before I even get into the programming piece, let's talk about, about the data tools here, the real-time data you can collect and analyze. And maybe you're already a PASCO um, consumer and you use our probeware and whether it's SparkView or Capstone in your classrooms. Let's show you how that transfers to the code node here. So let me show you all of the data um, inputs that you have with this device. So I'm going to start with showing you temperature. So it has an ambient temperature sensor. Uh, it measures in Celsius by default, but you can change this over to Fahrenheit. And if I cover that ambient temperature sensor with my hand, you'll see that the temperature starts to increase over time. I can kind of help it along. There we go. So that's how the ambient temperature sensor can be read. Let me show you what else we got. Uh, we also have a light sensor on the device that measures brightness from zero to 100%. It's pretty bright in the studio right now, but as I cover that light sensor, you see how quickly the light levels drop. Again, this is great information that could be used in a coding program. Uh, the next one we have with this sensor is loudness and we measure loudness in zero to a hundred percent and I can simply snap my fingers here or clap my hands or talk um, and then I can see that those levels fluctuate again from zero to a hundred percent. The next tool we have here is a magnetic field sensor that's located right here at the top of the device. And to demonstrate this, I'm just going to take a magnet and put the North Pole to it, reverse South Pole, and this measures in Gauss. Got a few more to show you here. Um, I'm going to choose Acceleration X, 
and add a graph so I can show you acceleration y at the same time. So there is a motion sensor located in this device. When I start collecting data, I can show you what that looks like. If I move it up and down, acceleration y, and then side to side for acceleration x. And there's more. Uh, the next ones we have, we can measure tilt x and tilt y. So that's percentage and degrees. I'm going to start collecting data and then just tilt the code node back and forth and forwards and backwards. So all of these data inputs can be utilized either if you just want to do some analysis scientifically or if you want to gain information to plug into a program. All right, so let me show you what's in these kits. So the first one we have is the Coding with Sensor Technologies kit. It comes with 10 student activities. Um, everything is also digital online, so you can access the teacher versions of these. It comes with a set of bar magnets, this great holder for the, the code node that you can utilize, and then you can get the kit with or without the code node. That's not all though with these because again, we told you you get 10 activities, but we've created a flip book for each of these kits that lives online. And again, as an educator with my own classroom that I had to manage and then moving to state and then back into a, a district level, I was really charged with, oh my goodness, we're talking about computer programming and computational thinking. I've got to meet these people where they're at. So we need to have um, basic introductions, more advanced. It really depends on where everybody was at. So to solve that, I'm going to bring you into one of these flip books. We actually created a student-centered video for every single one of the activities that lives in this flip book. So the way they work is we introduce with a science concept, kind of a hook to get the students interested. And depending on the activity, sometimes we build the code together. Sometimes we talk about the data collection they need to pull in. And then we'll ask, they'll give them a challenge, they pause the video, and then we come back and build it step by step. So these videos serve as a great way to either uh, allow a teacher to view it to gain some confidence in delivering the lesson if they're new to coding, or you can just have it directly for the students to watch to work through the challenges themselves. This is a good fit. Uh, I recently worked with a middle school STEM teacher who had advanced STEM for seventh and eighth, and he was looking for more module type of kits to put throughout the classroom. And things like this work great because you can have a set for a couple students set up as a station and they can walk through and tackle different activities as they roam throughout the room. Our next kit is coding with vehicle sensor technologies. And I'm gonna bring you back into the data view here um, shortly, but we have the code node cart, which the code node snugly fits in. Going to bring you back into SparkView. Move this tray over. And before I go any further, I really should mention we have um, several people that are available in chat. If you have questions as we're going through here, um, we have Isaac, we have Humberto, so we have international and domestic sales folks on. I have Mackenzie out there as well. So if you have questions, please feel free. Uh, Q and A is a good way to go because it queues up. But if you want to use chat, that's perfectly fine too. And when I'm done showing everything, uh, if you want to ask me a question directly, we'll have a little bit of time at the end that I am happy to answer any questions that you have live. Okay, so back to SparkView. I'm going to start a new experiment just to get a clean screen. Go to sensor data. My code node is already attached, but I want to draw your attention down to the motion sensor. So you saw how we could calculate acceleration x and y and the tilt angle for x and y. But now I have cart position and cart velocity. So let me start off by showing you cart position. And I've, we have a resonant physics 
uh, what do you call him? He's a phenomenon. All sorts of people follow him, Dan Burns. And I have a lot of conversations with him about physics and what are the important things that you really hope that students come into that classroom understanding. And he repeats position graphs and understanding velocity a lot. And this tool can actually show you those calculations. There we go. Pause. Back to my starting position. So check this out. Before you even go into the Blockly coding, you can use our high-end data analysis tools. So I want the students to understand what speed is. And we're going to use a position versus time graph to figure that out. And I'm going to choose the data selection tool or the area select tool. I'm going to choose this area of the slope and then use our linear fit tool. And right here it does the calculations for the students. So at this point in time, I was going 0.293 meters per second, and that was my speed. But that's just looking at the scientific measurements. We also have a flip book that works here, and students are now looking at real world concepts with their vehicle, and they can mim mimic an odometer. We have these um, brass grams that fit kind of like right into wheel wells of the cart, so you can adjust the mass of the vehicle and see how that affects things. Uh, it comes with springs, measuring tape, and my personal favorite, if you want to get into inertia with students, there's a great activity that utilizes the cart and these little um, Lego-like guys where you can have them run into things and then calculate how their distance was affected by the rate of acceleration of the cart. And that is the second kit. The third kit is coding with sound and light technologies. And here we're talking about frequency and light, frequency and sound. It comes with a flashlight and again, a holder, five more activities to get kids started. And of course, the flip book again, to where the students can be introduced or this can be something where it becomes, again, more of a modular type scenario in your classroom understanding how to program light. So those are the three kits and what some of the things that they do, but let me give you a few demonstrations so you can really see the power of this tool. I'm gonna go ahead and take my code note out, take you back into SparkView. I'm gonna start a new experiment, again, just to have a clean screen. All right, so Let's start with a pretty basic code. We saw how the light sensor works, and that's the one that I want to utilize in this program, and it defaults to brightness, and I'm going to choose the line graph. And we're now talking about automatic night lights. So a lot of folks have them in their homes, but how exactly do they work? Well, when you look in the lesson, there is a foreword for the students where they, they get a little bit of information on how that sensor may work, and then they're challenged with making an automatic nightlight using our Blockly coding software, the real-time data they collect, and of course, the code node. So again, I can start data collection and see how the light levels are affected as I cover the light sensor. And I'm looking at this now to make sure I have a number that I want in my code. I'm gonna stop collecting data and go to the Blockly screen and I'm gonna build an infinite loop. So repeat while true. And my condition statement, I'm gonna pull my logic block in and I wanna set that condition. Now when you click on hardware, you will see all the different components that you can control, the speaker, the LED array, the RGB LED, but I'm gonna pull this first block in so I can set it to brightness. Now if I toggle here, I can choose other things, but for this activity, I want brightness. And I'm gonna say if the brightness goes below, let's say 4%, I want the RGB LED light to come on. And you can set these from zero uh, to 10 in terms of brightness when you're talking, talking about light frequency. So I also need to set a condition if that isn't met. So if it's brighter than 
like an automatic nightlight, I want it to turn off because I don't need it on. So really easy introductory program, um, understanding what a loop is and a condition statement and setting your else statement as well. And when I click start, let's see if I was successful. As I cover the light sensor, my RGB LED light comes on. And what's really great here is because you can adjust the brightness or intensity of each one of these red, green, and blue LEDs, you can get into a discussion about RGB color mixing and challenge students to create cyan or magenta or yellow um, just by changing the intensities of this RGB LED. So that's a basic program. So maybe you want to see something a little bit more advanced. Your kids are beyond this point. We have got you. I'm going to open a code that I already have set. And for this one, I want to utilize acceleration Y. And this is because we are going to turn uh, this code node into a random number cube genera uh, generator. So essentially, when I shake the device up and down, triggering that acceleration Y, it's going to cause this to occur. I'll show you the code. Look at that, much more advanced. We are introducing more math blocks. We're talking about absolute value. Uh, we're bringing in variables. Students are understanding that's a way to make your code more efficient and call out certain conditions or data sets. And in this case, the role is going to help me determine one through six on here. We have the, the random generator built in within the code. And then I even went a step further and we programmed the 5x5 five five LED array to mimic what would be on a number code. And in this case, we do want to share that we do have this block right here to where students could simply check off what lights they want to illuminate. But again, I wanted this code to be a little bit more advanced. So I'm using coordinate planes. Uh, so they understand how programmers program um, computer screens and they, can, they should have knowledge at some point on coordinating plots on this particular grid, and they can transfer that over into the program. So if my program is good, every time I use acceleration Y or shake the code node up and down, it's going to illuminate one of the numbers. So I shake it, and I have four, two, three, and it, Sometimes it's going to show you the same number again because it's a random generator. So more advanced code, getting into more advanced uh, features. Uh, students are still challenged with sometimes having to decompose a problem or finding that pattern recognition. And ultimately they are thinking by creating algorithms and having to create clear codes that other students can recognize and replicate themselves. So all of these activities in these kits support integration of science, mathematic practices, computational thinking, and if you're focusing on uh, computing and programming, all of those things help you introduce these pieces into the classroom. It's something I really wish I would have had uh, as we were unveiling these uh, standards and requirements in my district. It would have solved a lot of problems for me, made things a little bit easy. It's got a little bit of support built in for the teachers. And then of course they meet the students where they're at. And what I found is this might be intimidating for some teachers to get started with. The students have absolutely no problem with it. Just like everything else in technology, they see it and they take off with it and they do great things. So that covers our kits for today. Uh, but I want to give you a little bit of a teaser here and talk to you about what our next session is going to be. Uh, on March 30th, we are going to have uh, another set of webinars that are developing computational thinking and literacy in STEM. And what are we going to unveil that day? It is going to be our new sense and control line. And I got to leave you with a little taste of what you might see. And we're going to be introducing you to our control node. So we have the code node where you can use inputs to program physical outputs, such as the LED array, the, LED, the RGB LED, a 
speaker and even numerical and text output on your screen, then now you can actually make things move. So we got three kits we're gonna share with you uh, that use servos, fans, um, steppers, uh, various other sensors so you can actually control the environment of a plant in an eco zone or use the range finder and line follower gripper for our new Pasco bot um, or go deeper into engineering design uh, where students have multiple pieces to work from and they create their own creations so it's pretty exciting and to give you a teaser on what this might look like I'm gonna open one more program for you today that I already have built. And I took what we did before with creating the number cube, but now I turned it into sort of a meter game. So I've turned on my control node, and I need to connect it. Check this out. This was my fun little project. So now, whenever I roll a number on this code node, the control node, along with this servo motor, and my knowledge of angles of programming a servo motor, are going to move it to the number that's on my screen. Let's see if I got it. Okay. I got a two. Am I at two? Yep. Five. Oop, moved to three. Five, three. So how cool is that? Now, not only do I have physical inputs such as the LED array, but I actually can make things move and control things. And we'll be going deeper into that in our next session. Uh, I wanna remind you that we also have um, Isaac, who is available to answer any sales questions that you may have. He's ready to go for you. We also have um, John Wayne and Humberto within chat if you have questions for them internationally. Thank you for joining us for our first inaugural kind of Pasco Live 2.0. Uh, again, when we offer these, we'll be doing them twice a day so we can work better with your schedules and you will also be uh, receiving the recording for this to watch at your leisure. Maybe you're a teacher that wants to share it with your administrative team to see if something like this would be a good fit in your STEM programs. Thanks so much for joining.